we go. I've pressed record. We are now recording. Um, Alex Rutkin is a barrister and he uh, works in a law department at a university. So he'll explain what that means loads better than me. But I'm going to hand over to Alex now. Is that okay? Thanks, Alex. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sam. Um, and thank you, everybody, for joining. So, uh, yes, I'm a, I'm a barrister, just so I know sometimes the one thing I don't do, if any of you seen the TV shows like Rumpole, I don't stand up in court in a wig telling people they're guilty. I don't do criminal law. What I do uh, is, well, mostly what I do is mental capacity law. So the thing that I spend most of the time working on as a lawyer and also now I spend time at a university at King's College London as well, is trying to think about how we think about the law relating to capacity and people's ability to make their own decisions. And then one of the things that's been really, really bothering me since the pandemic started is, is partly that part of the law. So I suspect, I and mean, I hope we might have a bit of a discussion about how, we, how, how the Mental Capacity Act is applying and things like deprivation of liberty safeguards but also how the law more generally is understood or not understood by people. And I can tell you no one quite understands what law is at the moment. Uh, one of my colleagues in Chambers, I work in a, in a place with lots of other barristers, which is called a Chambers. One of my very senior colleagues emailed me the other day to say, is it okay for me to have a party? And this is someone who you'd expect should know the law inside out. And he was asking me, because I've been doing quite a lot of work trying to Hello. think about coronavirus and the law. Hi there. Hi. So what I'm just going to do very quickly, I promise I'm not going to speak either for very long or to lots and lots of slides, but I just want to put one slide up now. I want to give you an overview of what I'm thinking about. Then I'll put it back down so you're just looking at me. And at the end, I'll put it back up. So hopefully as a kind of reminder of the stuff I've been talking about. So. What I want to think about with you a little bit is the first thing is actually what, what does law do? Because one of the things that pande the pandemic has been teaching us is that there's so many things that the laws are doing, both telling us to do things, telling us not to do things, telling doctors that they should be doing things or not doing things or social workers should be doing things or not, think not doing things. So I just want to think a little bit about that. I want to think a little bit about what's actually the law. In particular, what can you get in trouble if you do at the moment and what is guidance? And then a little bit about where can you find information out about the law? Because one of the things is, you know this just as well as I do, if not better, the law keeps changing. What we're supposed to do about face masks, what we're supposed to do about keeping our distance keeps changing. So where can you find information out? And then I just want to spend a little bit of time thinking with you about what questions should you ask? And one of the reasons that we wanted to have this session was to arm you and your colleagues with questions to ask when you're worried about a situation. So kind of the way of framing it in terms of, well, why do you want this to happen? Why do you not want this to happen? So that's kind of just, I, I don't want to talk for very long because I just want to do a little bit of an introduction and then really I want most of the session to be you asking me questions or you making comments because hopefully I can be a, a resource for you. So just in terms of, I, I will just leave the slide up for one minute just to rem, just say you've got that link and then I can make sure that we circulate that link as well. If you haven't seen this Know Your Human Rights website, it's fantastic. It's really, really good. Uh, knowyourhumanrights.co.uk. It's a website created by the British Institute of Human Rights. And it's trying to think through for people. I've stopped sharing the screen now in case you're worried. It's now just back to me. Um, Sam looked really nervous there for a minute. I think she thought something had happened but British Institute of Human Rights. And what it is, is trying to help people think through what different types of human rights means. So can I just for one minute talk about, for instance, the right to life. So the right to life is absolutely critical at the moment. 
but it's critical in lots of different ways. So the government, the state, has got a duty to try and secure the right to life of people within England and Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland. And they've got a duty, that means they've got a duty to do some things where they're things that they can do. But that's not unlimited. And it's got to balance, for instance, if they're limited resources, thinking about where to spend money. And also, it then means that they're decisions that, for instance, a care home has to make. It's got to try and stop, it was being people have been told, well, you've got to stop, for instance, visitors coming into care homes. Because they might bring, brilliant, I'm really glad, Sam, you're doing that, you, the British Institute are doing a session with you, because it's so important to hear from them as well. So, for instance, a care home might say, well, I can't let visitors in because they might bring COVID-19. They might bring, bring coronavirus in. And that might mean that that puts people's lives at risk. But on the other hand, what we're now learning is, for instance, that people who are kept in isolation for long periods of time in care homes without visitors, they are really suffering not suffering physically so much as suffering mentally, not seeing people. And so how do you balance the right to life, right to life from, for instance, coronavirus being brought in and it being spread, with how do we make sure that the steps we're trying to make sure to take to stop, stop the spread, and for instance, isolation, don't mean that people get so depressed that essentially they just lose the will to live. So there's balancing going on. And a lot of the documents that you see from the government are, they may not say they're doing this, but what they're trying to do is tell people how to balance. Tell people who were doing caring, providing care, or other kind of organizations how they should be balancing. And that British Institute of Human Rights document, that guide, it's online, and it's meant for people. It's not meant for professionals. It's meant for ordinary people to think through, well, how are my rights being impacted? And it's a really useful tool. So that's just, and then you, uh, and because I really want to make sure we're, I'm responding to things, Gary, you were just asking about the Human Rights Act. And so that's the thing which says public bodies have to comply with the European Convention on Human Rights. So they have to, for instance, take account of people's right to autonomy, their right to make choices. It's a hugely important, and the question you asked, and I'm just going to read it out, and I mean, you, you're welcome to say it, or shall I just read it out from the chat function? I'll just read it out from the chat function here, just for speed. You're saying, if we come out of Europe, the government is doing away with the human rights, uh, what can we do? Um, we don't know yet exactly what the government's doing. We don't know exactly what they want to do with the idea of human rights. The one thing that they have said is that they want to think about having a British idea of human rights. I don't know what a British idea of human rights is meant to mean. The one thing I would say is the really important rights that we're talking about, so right to life, the right to liberty, the right not to be locked up without someone actually checking to see whether that's the right thing to do. Those are very, those are not, those are the sort of core rights even I think a government which says we really, really don't like giving rights to everybody, they're going to say a right to life is important. So we'll have to fight, but I think the really important rights for people on this call are still going to be important. We just think about, have to think about how we make sure those are protected and people talk about them in the right way. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. Can I just check? I think Sam had a question. Sam, did you have a oh, question? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, I'm just checking. Yeah. Sam, was did, did I get, did I see that? Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes my mom, my mom, I need my help. And, and if I want to go to my mom, I would go. But my support, what can nearly said that they will stop my support when they find out. Okay, so during coronavirus, you've gone to help your mum. Is that yeah. right? You don't live yeah. with her, but your no. support worker said that you shouldn't do that 
and they yeah. might stop your support if you went to go help your mum. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Ah, that's interesting, Sam. I think Alex might come back to those kind of questions. Alex, is that helpful? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, although, yeah, I, I will come back to them, but the one thing I have to say is, uh, the one thing I'm not allowed to do is give you advice yes. yourself. I'm just not, uh, I'm not allowed to do that as a barrister. Uh, for their very boring reasons, I can't do it but I'm not allowed to do it. But what I can try and think, you think through with you, is the last bit I'm going to talk about is what questions should you ask? What questions should you be asking of your support worker? What questions should you be asking of the organisation that provides the support worker? So I'll try and answer your question. I just will have to do it in a slightly different way if that's okay yes so we should have said and that's my fault i didn't say it in the introduction that we can't give individual advice today but we're going to talk about what we might do any of us might do in situations to work out what what choices are what choices people have and what yeah. the law says and like alex said what trouble you can get into if you yeah. break it or not okay thank you andrew did you have a hand up let me unmute you great okay so um yeah. the, the the problem that uh, that that i have is is that there was a bill that was passed around the corona virus um um act and that uh for the lifetime of the corona virus has actually weakened all of the actual um uh law, um laws that actually protect um um um, uh, disabled people and take away local authorities responsibilities and duties to a degree um, um, o o around the support uh, around the support that they actually need and so the worry that I have is, is that everything is kind every bit of advice is kind of going online but about 56% of, of, of people with learning difficulties in the wider disability movement is not actually online and therefore don't have the access to information. And often the folks that are around that actually they would be supporting them often say, it's not in my job description to actually give you this advice. And the, the, the um, uh, and therefore, and, and therefore, they end up with no information at all. And the information that they're getting from the media is um, uh, is this horrible word called vulnerable. And actually, it is as Baroness Jane Campbell said in the tweet once: um, it isn't actually the people that are vulnerable; it is actually the the state's fault for putting us in vulnerable situations. Um, uh, and, and I think the problem that we have is, is that the wider di disability movement, but particularly people with learning difficulties um, and autism, don't actually have access to the actual information and the folks that are supporting them don't actually have the actual information to give either. Okay. That's a, you've made it. I think at least three very important points there. I've tried to cram it all into three. No, 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 it's very <laughs> eloquent. So can I break it? Can I do my best to break those down for everybody? So the first point you made was that the Coronavirus Act, which was a thing that the government passed, that Parliament passed right at the beginning of the pandemic in March, what you said was that weakened the protections and the support that local authorities have to give. I think it's really, really important to understand that it, it gave the power to local authorities to do some things in some circumstances to say, we're gonna meet people's needs in a different, and you are right, in a, less, in a lesser way. But what it, what it's very important to understand is the local authorities are only allowed to do this if they've gone through a specific process 
And at the moment, no local authorities have actually got the process in place. And what's really important is that if you or any of the, your, the people you are, your, any of your colleagues are in local authorities or working with local authorities or receiving services from local authorities, and they start talking about the Coronavirus Act, skip to the last thing I had on my slide. What questions you should ask should be, why are you talking about the Coronavirus Act? It hasn't changed your duties under the CARE Act at the moment because you haven't triggered the process because if you had triggered the process it would have to be made public so why are you doing what you're doing why are you relying on the coronavirus act why are you not providing me or the person i'm working with the services that i should be getting under the care act so you're re you're right andrew that coronavirus act changed the law but it didn't mean that automatically means all local authorities go have to are under lesser duties. It's a little bit more complicated than that. The second point you made was there's an awful lot of information out there which is online, and there are a lot of people who need to get information who don't have access, or either don't have access to, or need the information in other ways. You are completely right. And that is, I mean, I know Sam and her colleagues at Learning Disability England, and I know other organisations are repeatedly telling the government, you need to make sure that you can get information in other ways. But you are, you are completely right. I'm afraid I just can't give legal advice. I, I know it's very frustrating. I know it is. It's frustrating for me. I know it's frustrating for you. I just can't do that on the facts of individual cases. But the best I can do is try and do the what questions should you ask? And then I think, I've now forgotten, was there one other point you made, Andrew, in that very effective intervention, which I've now, I think I covered everything, but if there's anything else, let, let me know. Yeah, <laughs> there was. Um, um, the, 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 um, um, right, so there was the UN Convention on yeah. the rights of uh, persons with, uh, oh, with yes. disability. Yeah. So whether so whether we stay in Europe or come out of Europe, we actually are a signature to to, uh, to, uh, to that law. And there was a shadow report that was actually uh, uh, there was a shadow report that was uh, passed in the European part in 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 in, 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 in uh, uh, passed, which was actually the first uh, the first one. My over uh, my, my my main worry though is is that everybody on this call has an awful lot of knowledge, but a lot of people with learning difficulties um, actually uh, actually actually, uh, actually, uh, actually don't, um, particularly people who are in adult treatment uh, adult treatment adult assessment treatment units treatment. Uh, adult yeah assessment treatment units ATUs and really those um, and I understand that you can't give legal advice but what I is that when people are told that they're not actually able to do something often they aren't looking for legal advice uh, and unfortunately, the, UN, the Equality and Human Rights Commission have actually, fundamentally, in my opinion, let the disability movement down. They have become uh, a pussycat rather than the tiger that we require it to be, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to be in a crisis such as this. I think that's <laughs> an important point, Andrew. I suspect that may be one we just have to... Uh, it's just a general, and it's a general it's a general point that i'm kind of making but something that i think you could go back with and kind of say what do we do as barristers and solicitors when we actually can only give advice when actually um 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 for a lot of people with learning difficulties they kind of memorize stuff um but then actually um, uh, go away, uh, um, and, and that's how they that's how they le learn rather than reading stuff. Yes, 
But I think, Mark, I'm going to come to you in a second, Mark Brooks, I've seen you want to, I think, Andrew, you raise really important points about part of the reason for Alex doing this session with us and for us to do it is because you are all people who are really well connected. And this is one way that we might get information to other people. You know, like if you know things, you can pass it on. But that's the thing for all of us to be thinking about is we could, how can we help people know about or find out the places where they can get good information or know their rights and keep pushing the government? Andrew, I'm not disagreeing. Mark and then Aisha. So we'll go to Mark. Do you want to unmute yourself, Mark, and then I'll come to Aisha? Hi there, um, Mark hey. Rich from Dimensions. I did send you a chat just around something. Um, Dimension is going down our own path, so we're not following the government guidance. I mean, we're looking at it, but we're following our own path. So, for instance, we're not opening our offices until October. So, and the other thing is, so we within Dimensions because we are going down our own path. We, 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 we've now started to challenge some of the things that Dimensions aren't doing right. So, for instance, not letting the people that we support see their parents and not doing that at the moment, which is one thing we're challenging also through the Human Rights Act as well. The, the, the right to live and the right to, to... So that's one thing we're doing. I mean, at the moment, we've seen a... A uh, uh, slowly push that it looks like the, the way we're going down is, is hey let's do a new risk assessment another risk assessment and and the other thing is, is to, um, around wearing face masks one of the things we've started here is, is not good is around people that have got exemption that now people are on the buses and that other people they, they get picked on now, so we're hearing stories around, around, around that all, also. Okay, yeah. so, so, Mark, so Mark, you were talking about what if uh, a support provider, what can, what, what, what can people do or what are the good questions if somebody thinks a support provider mm. is, 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 could do, they want to do something and the support provider well, says no, which is a little bit like what Sam raised, isn't it? Yeah. Sam said, yeah. what yeah. if my supporters say this, but I think I should be able to do that? That's yeah. one of the things, isn't it? And I guess we could ask Alex, what are the questions to ask around that? Well, I'd do the exact opposite. A support so. provider. I know you would, but that's you. <laughs> okay. Um, don't forget now, I'm an MBE as well. Yeah, yeah, well, I know, I know. And what about, so there's the what can you do if you support a provider saying this or you support mm. us saying this and you yeah. think something different and what also um what what are the good questions to ask or the things to be doing if people are getting challenged around say face masks yeah so face yeah. coverings okay mm. brilliant yeah. and Aisha had one so I'll do that and then we'll come to you Alex is that all right yeah yep. Aisha? um you know um you know when this like first started and I remember everyone was telling me, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And everyone was just like, it was really hard. Even for myself, I just liked to myself. It was like really hard. But I suppose as time goes on, you just, you know, you just don't like, you, you don't like think about it as much. And you just, you know, yeah, that's, yeah, I know like it can be frustrating sometimes because I didn't like see my family for four months. And it was like really hard because they live all over the place, and obviously you can't go and visit them. And people are saying, "Oh, we can have parties." No, no, no. It's like, yeah, you are, but it's uh, it's it's confusing. It's very it confusing for even okay. for myself because. I wasn't like in the park yesterday and I was just like, oh, there's like loads of people in the park. But I said, well, they must be doing something, right? Because they were like social distancing. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Aisha, I guess, are you kind of saying, you know, what if when things change, we want to find out what are they, what we can do? Yeah. Like, can we have a party? Yeah, or, well, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to like, no, because everything's changing every day. And like some like I know some people, their 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 workplaces are um, then 
they will get back to them but it's just like a matter of time because they're probably figuring out the best way to like do work in an environment like theater yeah. or stuff so yeah brilliant okay thanks Aisha and I think Gary had his hand up so should we just check what Gary's got and then we'll come to Alex with those points is that okay what well, uh, Peter um, with open way and what I'm saying about it uh, yes so we they've said in the last week that if you're overweight if you're obese if you're very fat then you are more at risk haven't they they think that you might be more at risk from coronavirus being very poorly so but that's true of other people with conditions as well isn't it somebody might have a health condition that puts yeah. so i guess one of the things is what are the things we need to think about if we're somebody who might be more at risk? Is that what you're saying, Gary? Yeah. yeah like if you're overweight and you might be more at risk. Yeah. Right. Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah. So, Alex, I'm off for a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, Mark's question, uh, which, was, which is also linked to the, or like Mark's point, which was also linked to the one to, to your, the earlier point about well, what can I do in terms of seeing people or not seeing people? And then Mark used the word risk assessment. And I, I'm afraid that's a word which is going to be used, words which are going to be used over and over and over again, because they are the only way, and I'm not defending them, but this is the only way that an organization can say, this is how we can properly say someone can see someone else or there could be a visitor or it's okay for a support worker to help because it's not like there is one very easy answer. Well, sorry, I should say there's one very, very easy thing to say. And Andrew, you'll be pleased. I'm giving you some advice here. <laughs> The one thing you simply can't have anywhere is an absolutely blanket policy which just says nothing is going to happen. Nobody can see anyone. Say, that's just not, that's just unlawful. And that's unlawful, for instance, in an, an assessment and treatment unit, and it's unlawful in a care home, it's unlawful anywhere. But what is okay legally is to say there's a proper reason why we've got to proceed there's a proper reason why we can't have people seeing each other at this point it's too risky and so risk assessments are just a way of saying we think at the moment it's too risky because and you don't want me telling people to put how you put i don't want you to go away thinking all alex is doing is saying how you put barriers in the way so what you really want to be doing is flipping it round, turning it round, like Mark, you're doing it dimensions and saying, why are we doing this? Or why are you doing this? Can you tell me about the risk? What's the actual risk that you're up to that we're trying to protect against? And is there some other way that we could, that risk could be avoided? And if I could just take an example for one minute. Assume, if somebody is very unwell, they've got cancer, they haven't got very long left to live, nothing you could do could keep that person alive, then it would be very, very wrong to say, let's not let their family in to see them. Because there's nothing that you could do to increase the risk that that person's dying they are dying anyway from cancer and so it's making sure if people are being too risk what's too risk averse they are being too cautious yeah and that word vulnerable you picked up on that i think it was andrew you picked up and you picked up on it as well gary this idea of vulnerability and there's something i know why the word is used and it sort of makes sense for people trying to think what the right thing to do is. But what it does is create the idea 
that there are people who are just vulnerable, as opposed to there are things we can do. And so I'm, that's why Andrew, you were mentioning Baroness Jane Campbell, reiterating it's as much and else what other people are doing, which is creating the problem. But in terms of questions to ask, it's why, if you say you need to do another risk assessment, why do you need to do that? What are the risks you're actually thinking about? And another word, good word to use is what are the benefits you are not taking into account? What's the benefit to this person, to your mum of seeing you? And so, because a risk analysis or a risk assessment isn't, can't just be about risk, it's also got to be about benefits. So I was going to ask you about that, Alex. When, when we are thinking about, let's talk about visiting, because it's been in the news a lot, hasn't it? Yeah. If people are being told you can't see somebody because it might give you coronavirus, it's too risky, we can also argue, can we? Well, actually, it's really bad for this, my health not to be seeing yes. my family because it's making me very depressed or anxious or, you know, for somebody. Because it has to be both, doesn't it? Both are bad for us, yeah. you know, not, not getting to do some things. So, yeah. It's about balancing as well. Yeah. Balancing yeah. because it's like, you not seeing someone and then and then the pe some people they might have anxiety or they might get used to seeing that one particular person or if there's a support home and yeah i think it's really hit people hard because they want to see people and they just can't do it unless yeah. it's within two meters or whatever and you know it's, it's making people anxious as i suppose yeah. Well, it's not just making them more anxious, Aisha. It's actually, in some cases, not being able to see people. I'm going to be tell it as it is. It's yeah. killing people. Yeah, no, in it is. I, I can tell. Yeah, a and can I tell you a story quickly? Like, you know, some of my friends, they, 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 I think like when it first started, we were really missing each other. So we said, oh, we should just get like a Skype call going. And like, that's what I did with my family. And just because I said, you know, it can't carry on like this. So my cousin said we should like do a Skype call maybe like, every, like maybe every two weeks. And it, it really helped because we get to see each other, but like, just through a phone. So that's, that's what we suggested because it was, I said it can't carry on like this because I know everyone's going to be missing. It's all just like killing people and you know, so we just decided we're, we're just going to do like a, a Zoom chat and it really, and we've done quiz nights and all sorts. It was really fun. Good. Yeah. And actually you reminded me, I will see if I can find it and send it to Sam. I saw a news... Uh, an article in the New Scientist, so a scientific journal this morning right. about hugging and how they can, how you can risk assess hugging. Because really? a hug is wow. really important. Yeah. And if you're socially distanced, I've got to be two meters away from you or I'm talking to you by Zoom. Hmm. I mean, I don't know you, so I wouldn't hug you. That would be inappropriate. Yeah. If it was yeah. a family member and I would want yeah. to so yeah. I, and that's just people thinking there okay Only, yeah you know you've got a question but can i just very I, I just wanted to make sure i'd answered aisha's question first if that's okay yeah which yeah. was the one because it was a really important question um and then gary's question as well the, the, this question that you're two well both of them were sort of talking about guidance because yours, Aisha, was, you know, what do you, you see people in a park and, well, yeah. how many people are there and what are they up to and are there more than 30? And is that <laughs> a, not yeah. a, And this is one of the things where, because we've now got in different, in different places in England, we've now got different laws about how many people can be in one place at one time. <laughs> never had this. I mean, before yeah. coronavirus, you would never ever have had a law saying you can't have more than 30 people together. But we've now got in most places you can't have more than 30 people together. Greater Manchester, Burnley, some of Leicester, there is far fewer people and in different places. 
and so when and so that when it says the law well I, I try and use words carefully being a lawyer so when i say the law says that means you could get in trouble if <laughs> so in other yeah. words if you do this or you go into a shop for instance and you haven't got a face mask on and you haven't got an exemption you're breaking the law and you could get into trouble you yeah. could be fined yeah you could actually yeah. go to prison but no one is ever going to send somebody to prison oh, but that's yeah. what the law says but why and it's 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 it has been very unhelpful for everybody <laughs> It has been particularly unhelpful for people with learning difficulties. Yep. Actually, that you've got the difference between the law and guidance. So, for instance, Gary, you were talking about, well, what about the guidance in relation to people who are obese or people who are overweight? It's not a law says you can't, you know, you must be a certain weight. And if you aren't a certain, if you're over that weight, you're breaking the law. It's not that. It's guidance saying, we know that being very overweight can put you at greater risk. Therefore, it's a good idea if you don't. But all the things about guidance are always, it's a good idea for you to do this, but you can't be punished if you don't. <laughs> and what isn't helpful, and one of you put this, I think Marsh, you put this, so yeah, you put this up. Um, well, it's partly about we're going to announce it and then it's going to be coming into law. And then quite often is you'll get Boris Johnson or some other government minister saying the two metre rule is in force, for instance. So we've got to be two metres apart. In England, the two metre rule isn't law. Mm. It's just yeah. guidance saying it's a really good idea yeah. to try and keep two metres apart if you can. To make sure yeah. that you don't in you don't by mistake spread coronavirus yeah. you couldn't be arrested for not being two meters apart mm. and so that's it, it it's what i find difficult and i'm a lawyer i'm supposedly know the law i find difficult sometimes saying to people this is the difference between what the law is and what guidance is but just always go back to the question if someone's telling you to do something, or you're working in, for instance, at Dimensions and it's got a policy which says, please make sure you always ask, why are you saying I should do this? Are you saying this is the law? Or are you saying this is guidance? Yeah, that's that will help you, again, be that question of what, why is this, why are you telling me I should be doing this? Yeah. But, Jody, you've been very patiently wanting to ask a question. Should we come to you uh, now? No, it weren't a question. It, it were just going back to, is it Aisha? It, yeah. That, is, that how you, is that how you say your name? Sorry, I don't apologize. Um, and I was, I was in the same boat when we, when we were in lockdown. I think it were five or six weeks in. And with me having depression, I just got really down and I, I ended up uh, I ended up crying because I missed uh, my friend's company so so my, go my good friend Alison there who, who was on mute um, she kindly came to mind with little Bella there a, a, a little cutie um, and, and Richard and another friend and we, we were apart we, we, we were following the rules and we, we just had a really good natter and everything. And I, I can't thank her enough for that. You know, that really cheered me up. So, um, so it was very nice. But yeah, I, I was so upset. I, I missed her company and I missed um, my friend Richard. And so that were, they were really nice. But, but yeah, I do see where I, I should just come in from. It, even Skype, yeah. You, you see the face to face, but it's kind of not the same, is it? You know, you, you'd rather you'd rather be face to face. Uh, no, 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 it's, it's, it's this way. So, no, no, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> that, that's all I wanted to say. Sorry. I'm, 
no, 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 Jodie, thank you, because I think you re make a really important point. And I think it was Aisha that said it at the beginning. All the time we're trying to work out a balance, aren't we? And like yeah. Alex says, the law is the stuff we can get into trouble for and the guidance is good to do. So we've got to balance, you know. Um, Mark, I think you wanted, you've had your hand up for a bit. quick things around guidance number one around being able to have a bubble it's not been really clear i mean i haven't been able to set up a bubble just because most of my friends and family live outside london and the other thing around is getting you people with learning disabilities and, and that getting tested there's no really accessible information around where to go and what you have to do. I mean, luckily, my uncle, I was with my uncle last week down in Cumbria, so they were going to get a test because they have a part time job supporting the elderly. So, luckily, they, they got me a test. It's not a very good experience, I tell you, it really isn't. But I got myself tested, and by Wednesday, got sent off, and by Friday, NHS sent me an email saying I, I, I was negative. So, but I'm just saying, information-wise, guidance-wise, for both those two, not very good. You are, you are completely right, Mark. I mean, there is, I've now seen, I put it, I think you've got it on your website as well, Sam, but I've put it on mine as well. There is now a video I've seen of, I mean, deliberately designed to try and explain to people what, what the swab test is. Right. So it's actually quite, I mean, it, it helps just in, as you've said, it's really not very nice, mm. but this at least shows people right up your nose. Like, <laughs> so that if you're trying to explain to someone, mm. yeah, if you told me you've got to have a swab test. I mm. actually would go, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. So there is a video. I know it's on my website. I can show you later. But okay. I think it's on your website as well, Sam, because one of the things I was going to say was learning disability England has got, but in terms of places to look, your coronavirus hub, Sam, is really useful because it's, you can go to one place and then you can look out to other places. It doesn't help with Andrew's point for all the people who aren't able to get online, but it does at least have one place which helps a bit. And then Gary, you can I just mention Gary's point because you've also flagged, you've also raised a point someone else mentioned a minute ago, which I forgot to talk about the, the idea that on, for instance, face masks, not wearing them, Mm, that was me. Yes, thank you, Mark. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. trying yeah. to hold in my head all the different people <laughs> are asking questions. You're asking such good questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, but both of you, Mark and Gary, have mentioned you know what happens, and we're now we're now starting to see that. And I, I hope yeah. none of you have been on the receiving end yourself. But you are definitely seeing now. You've got many, many more people in shops on buses, on tubes in London or the metro in Manchester, say, uh, wearing face masks and people not wearing face masks. And then why aren't you? Mm. And you've got, the government has got a, if you want, you can print out something to, a card to yeah. hold. Mm. Yeah. Can I make a confession? Can I tell you something? Sure. I really am... I'm torn about that. I, 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 I don't know, and it's not for me to say, but I don't know what I feel about that. Why should you have to hold a badge up saying, this is why I'm not doing something? Mm. But for some people, it might be easier, especially now you've got badges which look official. It's got something which looks like it's from the government, that might help sometimes say, mm. I, I've got a proper reason. Mm. Yeah. And then you, it, but it, you can't necessarily stop everybody. It, it, there are different things going on. There's what people should do, 
and then there's what people do do and the videos of situations where people just act horribly is yeah all all you then all you then hope is that those people when the videos then appear online and everyone re most normal people react and say that's appalling how dare this happen I can see Sam has left us. I'm hoping she's... No, 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 I've come back. I've come back. <laughs> I think um, Alison, uh, we're, we're having a, night, uh, an, a bad technology morning in this house. Fine. Alison has a question and Gary yes. has hand up again. But Alison, do you want to go next? Is that all right? Alison, we can't hear you. You're muted. Do you know when it's going to end? Because some of the, not myself, I'm not too bad, but some of those colleagues are really getting fed up now. They want to know when it's going to end. And I just, we just keep telling them it's going to take a really, a very long time. I think they're just really getting all that fed up. Not myself, but some of our colleagues, but we do Zoom calls and just getting a, you know, like, look a bit fed up, but they're eating out all the time. And I think it's just getting them down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh gosh, that's such a good question, Alison. Um, <laughs> when is it going to end? Well. Yeah. Yeah. Jody, we all just need to sit doing this, don't we? Like, who knows? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, 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 I have no better idea than you do. But, but the one, the one thing I think I would say is. A lot of the guidance, so not the law, so the law, if you do something and you break the law, you could get into trouble, mm. but the guidance, we think it's a good idea if, a lot of that guidance is the government trying to say, if you do this, that will mean we can keep things as normal as possible. If you don't do this, you and everybody don't do this then we're going to have no choice but to make the law stricter again and say we will have to go back to what it was remember the middle of march you know you weren't allowed out of your house apart from to go shopping mm. you weren't you know think all sorts of things you weren't allowed to do so the guidance is the government trying to say this is how we're trying to manage things and if people follow this this means we can try and keep it as normal as possible but and the other thing i would say i am really aware that i'm talking to lots of people who are in turn talking to other people where the guidance is would you please stay at home we want to identify you as vulnerable. Please stay mm -hmm. at home in some way. So I'm very aware that the guidance is saying, let's make life normal for as many people as possible. But we don't, we are going to say that people we want to treat differently. And what I want you to be asking, Andrew, I know you already asked this, but I want everyone to be asking is why? Why do you have to say that some people need to be treated differently so everyone else can get on with the rest of their lives? Is that really how, how we should approach things? So keep asking why. Sam, there was a question. Gary, yeah, last... Gary had his hand up as well. Sorry, I missed that one. Oh, and Marsh is asking about whether we think a vaccine can be made compulsory. So we'll come back to that in a second. Gary, you had your hand up. Uh, when you let a large Peter uh, in some places, not in not the main room, uh, not not stay in the far, uh, allowed in main room or not. Say right. that again. So, are you asking are some people? Are you allowed to see people in a room, but just not yeah, in your flat? In the main room. In the main yeah, room. Not, not in the flat. And the, where are we? They got loud in the main room. Thing Peter. Okay. So, so that thing, uh, Matt, 
nearly five months now, locked in out, not to see that kitchen lifted. Yeah. So, so, so if somebody lives somewhere with a communal room, with a shared room, like the other everybody can use, so like, um, but you all yeah. have, everybody has their own flat, then what are the, at the moment, what does the law or the guidance say about people meeting up in the shared space rather than yeah. in the flat? Yeah, okay. Now, I'm so confused by the guidance. I'm going to look at you all for some help here because I think that what the rules say for all of us at the moment is that we, if unless you're in one of the places with extra rules, which is Greater Manchester and Bitster, West Yorkshire and Leicester, then we are allowed to meet people to have somebody visit us in our house. Yes. That's right, isn't it? Is that yep. right? Unless we're in a place with extra rules. And this is going to keep changing that, that some places will have more rules than others, maybe. But at the moment, you can have a visitor in your house if you try and stay apart from each other. Okay. Well, no, even that, you can ignore the two-metre rule as well. Can you? Yeah. Oh, if you're in a bubble. It's not a, that, it's, it's not a rule. Right. It's not the law. It's guidance. So I just have to keep, I always get across. I, I know two meter is, it's really important mm. to try and be sensible. Yeah. That, because the closer you are to someone else for the for a long period of time, the more likely you're going to trans, you're going to give COVID-19 or catch COVID-19. But it's not a law. You, apart in England. Right, it is right. in Wales and is in Scotland that you, if you break, come within two right. meters of someone, you'll break the law and you're in trouble. No, thank you for that. Because I was so confused. Someone kept asking me and I said, do you know what? I don't know. I think, because I think people are confused with law and guidance. And I said, Look, I know there's a difference, but I just don't know. So thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> yeah. So, so, like, yeah. so, so we, maybe one of the things we could think about, because I'm aware we've been on nearly an hour and we'll be exhausting Alex uh, at some point. He will run out of steam. <laughs> and he's you, I'm going. Um, but, um, but I, I if we think about we could maybe think about helping us all understand what is the law and what is guidance and guidance is still important isn't it because like alex mm. says the guidance is there to try and and stop coronavirus spreading that's the point isn't it oh, it's not yeah. just random yeah you know it is to try and keep as many of us safe mm. and healthy as humanly possible mm. so but understanding the difference between when you're making a decision that's about balancing and risk and when it's the law would, is helpful, isn't it? To try and get your head around. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, Gary I think... raised an important point. Can I just come back at some point? I think we might, we might not get it today. I'm hearing stories that make me think that if you live in a place where there's support, you might be getting less choices. Mm. And if you lived in a place where there wasn't support. Yes. So I'm yes. hearing lots of stories where because somebody lives in a, in a shared house that's got support coming in or because, um, because there's a communal room or a residential or whatever, this, whatever it's called, people might be having more restrictions put on them than I'm having in my house. You know what I mean? Going back to the guidance thing, Alex, and you know, <laughs> and actually that that feels like that we need to ask questions about that, doesn't it? If that to find out if that's true. Yes, and it's also the case that the guidance which came out about care homes recently, in some situations, has led to people's ha people's people having visits stopped. Mm which is very ironic yeah because care homes have been doing things and then the guidance says you need to do proper risk assessment you need to get guidance from the public health officer for your area you need to have the local authority making a decision and then some care homes went oh help we've been being letting too many people in and so when we get the guidance because we're waiting for guidance updated guidance about supported living placements and shared life schemes 
we don't have it yet. I am a little concerned, and you're going to need to shout loudly, <laughs> if that starts, if that does anything other than saying, people need to be sensible, yeah. and they need to balance what we were talking about earlier. Balance what's important about people seeing each other and the possible risks, not just focus on possible risks. Yeah. Gary, I'm just, can I just say one thing to Gary, if I may, please? I think one of the things, and it picks up on what you said as well, Sam, if it's a purely private home, the law says you can meet. It gets more complicated when it's somewhere owned by somewhere, someone. I mean, a provider of some kind, if it's a shared lives provider or, or there's a local authority owning it and they are having to make decisions about who comes in and who doesn't. Because it's not, it's, although it, it's meant to be the person's own home, it's mm. slightly different to a situation where no one else is involved. And that's the point you were making, Sam, but I just wanted to make sure I'd tied it. I'd very specifically talk to, to, to Gary here as well, is it's horribly, in some cases, worse if you've got support around because mm -hmm. you've got other people and other organisations and other things going on which make it more complicated. And more complicated generally... Well, it means you should ask more questions, but more complicated tends to mean more difficult just to do what feels like the right thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, but it is difficult. I mean, I guess, Alex, maybe we need to keep an eye on this, all of us, because it doesn't feel fair that if you're somebody with support in your life, you aren't getting the same chances to work things out through this. You know, you you, you might not be more clinically at risk but somebody might be like you say making sure they're looking after their own responsibilities which is the right thing isn't it i understand that i'd be doing that if i was them but we don't want people to be disadvantaged more i guess you know it's hard feels really hard to me anyway it mashes my brain gary borley you have your hand hand up and um yes I was going to say if we could Andrew. in our next newsletter do what is law and what is guidance. Maybe put something on on the hub. Okay. So, because right. I think if there's a bit of conf confusion between what is guidance and what is law, then we need to sort of ex help people to be explained what the difference is. Okay. Yeah, great. No, that's a good idea. Andrew, you had your hand up as well. Right. Yes, I did. Uh, right. So, um, right. So I'm shortening this. Oh. So, um, and uh, so we've had, um, if you're talking about the general public, we've had um, uh, experiences of the general public um, uh, pushing, um, uh, uh, people with learning difficulties that I know um, um, in, 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 in town just to actually be, uh, be, in, uh, be in front of them. And I think that the, one of the problems is, is that over the last 20 years, the respect for um, the support that disabled people need has dropped considerably. And there is a huge difference between NHS provision and social care provision um, mm. and I'm and moving forward because we all like to kind of move forward I'm wondering whether there is some work that can be done that would mean that people with learning difficulties yeah. voices yeah. get heard um, rather than Family, uh, family members, although they can play a very supporting role, to say uh, um, the nation has not been supporting um, disabled people 
um, in the UK, particularly very well in the social care sector, and it has not been funded or respected well. And it is different to actually the NHS provision because I think that the public can't tell the difference. They're not that actually educated. Um, and I'm wondering whether there is a way in which we can play an education role as well as asking politicians some very hard, hard questions so that it is folks like Gary, folks like uh, Mark um, um, and other strong self-advocates um, that actually are asking difficult questions rather than um, well-intentioned family members, if I can put it as politely as, 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 as that. If we're going to make a substantial change to actually help the public understand that our lives matter um, rather than us feeling isolated, cut off and forgotten about. So when you're in uh, a legal role, I'm wondering going forward whether you can use the phrase um, people with learning difficulties and autism have been feeling isolated, cut off and forgotten about and it is the government's fault because they haven't got the messages out in a way that has met our access needs and that we can actually understand and then make our own choices. Well, one very concrete, Andrew, those are very <laughs> important points. One very concrete thing I can say is I am very, to the extent this is relevant, I am very aware of this. I'm also a special advisor to the Joint Committee on Human Rights, who are doing an inquiry into the human rights implications of COVID-19. And so I I can say, and I already have been saying in my capacity there, all the different things that COVID-19 and its response, coronavirus and its response has shown about how people with learning difficulties, people with autism, how society responds to them and how government has responded. I can't promise it will necessarily make all the difference, but at least there is, I can, there's a personal commitment I can make to you that use, I can use the um, I can use my influence there to the extent that that's relevant to flag, and they are already aware. But I can flag that even more loudly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um, Gary, is that another question? I was just about to yeah. bring, it, bring us to a close soon. Go on then. Go on. Why not in an easy way? Sorry, that was a very big sigh from me, Gary. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I mean, th there is some in Easy Read, and, and Learning Disability England has been doing a very Sam's been doing a very good job trying to pull stuff together. But no, you are right. There really, there is nowhere near enough. And can I just say, this is also a very good example. The discussion we've been having now about difference between law and guidance. This is a very good example. If the government had committed to producing easy read interpretations of what they meant, this would have helped everybody. <coughs> Just reminding people easy read isn't for one group of people. If you can explain a message clearly, it helps everybody. So they're letting absolutely everybody down, but they're particularly letting people down for whom very long guidance documents is are inaccessible. Can I just say one thing, Sam, because I'm just very, I mean, I'm conscious of time, but I'm just conscious that there was the question about vaccine. Oh, yes. Can I just, just touch on that very quickly? I think it's, my personal view is, it seems to me, it's very unlikely that the government could ever say that a vaccine is compulsory in the sense of the law, if you don't have a vaccine, you are breaking the law. What they will definitely be saying is very strong guidance that you should have it. 
I, so I think it's, um, it, I mean, I have seen suggestions that if they get a vaccine which is sufficiently effective, it should be made compulsory. But I would be really surprised if that was the case. Yeah. I, think the may, I think the bigger problem, if I may, is that there won't be enough supplies of vaccine. And it's how is it that we can make sure that those are allocated properly and, and prioritise people who most need them. That, so it's almost the other way around. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Um, thank you, all of you, um, for coming. Um, thank you, Alex. It feels like we gave you an hour long test. <laughs> so I hope it doesn't feel like that for you. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm, very, I'm just really aware that so many of the questions you ask are ones I'd love to be able to give a really straightforward yes, no. And it just makes me cross that I can't do a straightforward yes, no. Some of it is because it's just not straightforward. But a lot of it is we've identified that people really should have done accessible guidance or stuff which isn't online. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It really helped. Thanks. No problem. Brilliant. Thank you very much, all of you. And we will have a go at maybe explaining the difference between guidance and uh, law. <laughs> and let's see. And we might we might um, get Alex to check that because we don't want to get every, give everybody bad information either. So <laughs> I'd be very happy to help. Yeah. Thank you. You're, you're... Thank you all very much. Take care of yourselves, and we'll send you a link to the recording, but we won't be sharing it and stuff. Say, so, okay, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Bye -bye. Take care, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.